Hi uh, to everyone. Uh, I am V. Srinivasrao, known as uh, VSR. Uh, I am chairing uh, IET Future Tech Panel uh, Smart Cities uh, Working Group. So we have been doing uh, uh, so many webinars and uh, podcasts. So in that series uh, today, uh, we would like to discuss a very interesting topic, uh, 5G, how 5G is going to change the city landscape. Uh, the topic for today's discussion is uh, software-defined uh, smart cities powered by 5G. And I have with me uh, Bhanu, uh, who was also my colleague. We both worked at uh, Satyam and uh, Tech Mahindra. He is well known in the telecom space. So, and now I think like me, he also started uh, his own uh, company, Oga Technologies. He is the managing director and the CEO of uh, uh, Oga Technologies. Uh, Oga Technologies is focused mainly on artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, NLP, computer vision, and analytics, uh, and takes the advantage of uh, the cloud and uh, IoT. He has uh, uh, about three decades of experience working in large scale uh, uh, development centers, uh, management, established uh, global partnerships, and analyst relationships. And he's pretty uh, well known for his uh, innovations and uh, he contributed for a lot of IPs when he was working in the corporate uh, on, on different solution assets. So he is known in the telecom and uh, fintech uh, domains. He's traveled more than probably 35 countries and uh, offered consulting uh, solutions. Um, I would like to welcome Vanu. Uh, welcome to IET uh, Future Tech Panel Smart Cities Working Group uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay sir. Thanks for having me here today. Right. So, Balu, uh, I think we have been hearing all these generations, uh, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G. Uh, we basically, now we are in the stage of 5G and I'm sure South Korea started 6G also. Probably that we'll have a separate discussion. So, Balu, what is this um, uh, 5G and how it is different from uh, the 3G and 4G? So, could you please share your thoughts on that? Yeah, like you said, 5G stands for the fifth generation of mobile technology. Uh, first one was analog. Uh, we skipped it. I mean, didn't have it. We started with uh, 2G. Uh, then we had 2.5G uh, where the focus started on data and uh, the rate the rates started going up. So 3G with higher rates than 2G. Then uh, now we have 4G everywhere. It's called LTE, long-term evolution. And how is it different is uh, is an important question. Uh, 5G is revolutionary, so obviously it gives uh, much higher uh, data rates, uh, 10 times faster than 4G. In practical sense, you get a different kind of rates, uh, maybe three times, four times, or even 15 times, depending on your uh, historical 4G rates or 3G rates. And not only higher rates, uh, it also gives you lower latency. Uh, latency is a kind of delay. From the time you send the data to actually it gets started uh, started getting transmitted and it offers greater reliability and higher accuracy and lower latency even for location services not just for data it can assure you latency uh, like less than five seconds or three to five milliseconds uh, it's also more efficient in terms of spectral usage uh, the peak spectral efficiency of 4g was about uh, 15 uh, bits per second per hertz Whereas for 5G, it's almost double that of it, 30 BPS per hedge. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be cheaper because of lower spectrum costs. And uh, it also supports 10 times more devices. So let's say you can have 100,000 devices in one square kilometer. Now we can have 1 million mm -hmm. devices. So you can oh. have mass machine type of uh, communications. So you will have an electromagnetic waves mesh. We will be uh, swimming in that probably. So now itself we have so much of, uh, I don't know whether radiation will be there or not, but there will be radio waves. Maybe 100,000 means it is too much eh, within. <laughs> so like, I think within one square kilometer you said, right? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, okay. So yeah, this is one for every meter. So we can have internet of intelligent things. Ah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So when you say uh, this 5G, one aspect you said is, uh, more the devices can be connected. Well, that's where I think today it will really enable IoT solutions probably effectively. 
but can you also uh, please give me a thought on uh, we have the video conferencing audio conferencing and uh, when so many devices are connected uh, maybe millions and uh, maybe in future billions of devices will connect to internet uh, through 5g and all how 4g and 5g what sort of differences you see in terms of uh, the speed in terms of uh, the number of devices and uh, the uh, probably the quality of uh, all this video audio uh, so how it is going to impact the different industries uh, in our view yeah, so 5G takes an altogether a different kind of approach. So we talked about the data rates already. It can be like 10 to 20 times more, 3 to 5 or whatever it at least. But it's going to take an approach called network slicing. So in 4G, uh, what happens is if you have a network in a cell site, you and me are using both of our phones, we get the same quality of service. So same data rates, same quality of service, same latency, almost similar depending on where we are depending on our handsets, the shadow zones, or whatever. But whereas in 5G, uh, technically, by design, you can have network slicing. In the sense, the same network, you can offer different kinds of quality of services. You can slice the same network and offer those slices to different enterprises. Uh, so if there is a kind of uh, event going on, uh, that event can have a different slice. So it's like virtualization, network virtualization, uh, like what you have in the, so the whole, uh, cloud industry actually was premised on the network uh, host virtualization okay. so that's one and each slice operates as a, an independent network offering so you can have different performance characteristics that means you can have a, a slice with uh, low latency your uh, immediate response times or uh, real time uh, kind of uh, uh, particles vehicles or cell driven vehicles kind of thing and also okay. you have you can have uh, higher data rates or lower data rates all kinds of things okay okay so i heard in south korea uh, I downloaded a movie in 18 seconds probably from the 100th floor to coming down to the ground floor they were able to download a movie uh, from youtube i guess so i think that's the power of uh, 5g the speed at which uh, so the next question as um, we are representing smart cities working group under iet uh, future tech panel so what do you think uh, can 5g help in improving the economy or the financial position of uh, a city and also any social upliftment so so the people who are in poverty or uh, something any new opportunities uh, so socio economic status of city so what is the role of 5g in our view yeah 5g is going to be definitely a catalyst it's go, it's an enabling technology uh, it's expected to create a lot of economic value. Uh, the, uh, the World Economic Forum projects uh, $13.2 trillion, it's trillion dollars of global economic value in the next 15 years. Uh, that's what is expected to be generated. By the way, uh, this estimate, it's a long-term estimate, but it has been revised upwards uh, because of the faster adaption uh, that we are seeing all over the world. And it's also expected to create uh, $3.6 trillion of economic output. Mm -hmm. So, potentially, it's going to be slow for five years because it depends on the kind of uh, takeoff and it's going to accelerate in the next five years and uh, finally, it's going to taper off. The investment cycles are going to be longer uh, than 4G and they are going to coexist. So, Asia yeah. is going to lead this uh, GDP contribution and there are also going to be a lot of uh, tax contributions as well in terms of uh, uh, the, the taxes on the services, uh, the spectrum auctions and all that. And coming to cities, they are the ones which are going to be benefited first. Okay. So when you have smart cities, uh, you're going to have higher throughput, greater connectivity, support for more traffic, uh, more sensors. The smart city is all about uh, smart lighting, smart infrastructure, surveillance, high density of sensors, lots of enhancements in infrastructure, smart trash bins, digital signage, and so on. So all okay. those things with the tools can't be supported. Uh, they can all be supported. So it's it's a great enabling technology in that sense. And you can have uh, uh, collaborative robots. Uh, you can have industrial automation, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Uh, so uh, as you rightly said, I think it will uh, enable, it will become a catalyst for the real smart cities, which we always say software defined uh, uh, smart cities so the probably we can see an accelerated pace 
uh, in executing the smart cities uh, in India. Okay, uh, but can 5G uh, create so many opportunities, we say? So, do you see any possibilities that it creates new job opportunities in the city? And also, there are so many industries will be there, uh, business entities will be there in the city. So, do you see any additional benefits or advantages to uh, the people uh, probably aspiring for jobs or who are all in a different jobs? And also for the industries, what is that advantage? Maybe let us take manufacturing, healthcare, education, like that. Yeah, so so let me pick up the thread on uh, what you're talking about, the software definition, defined part of it. So I talked about virtualization. So yeah, and you can have network slices. So initially the slices can be manually defined, but the later AI can take over and it can define those things. And they also defined everything can be open except the core radio. So you can run it on Cots hardware that is commercially off the shelf hardware. So it's going to be a lot open. So mm -hmm. and it's going to drive a lot of uh, tremendous in innovation. So coming to jobs, it's going to create uh, an estimated number of 20 plus million so jobs. Uh, it's going to play out over a long time, uh, but it's going to create a new kind of jobs. It's not going to multiply the old jobs. Uh, some will be multiplied, but let's say let's categorize this. The rollout itself is going to be huge. Uh, in in 5G, what happens is the cell sites are much smaller. So let's mm. say if they, the cell sites are going to cover about two to three square kilometers uh, or a radius of two to three kilometers. Now their new cell sites of 5G are going to only cover uh, a few hundred meters. So they're going to be much smaller, mm. and they're going to be a lot more. Okay. So the rollout is going to take a lot of jobs, uh, the planning, the engineering, and all that kind of stuff. And the ancillary services, the value-added services, the collaborative innovation, that's going to generate huge number of jobs. So, for example, you can have drone-driven aerial service for plants, refineries, factories, or some yeah. kind of, uh, let's say, lakes or uh, green cover, whatever. You can have reconnaissance and uh, first responders can send the unmanned aerial vehicles and also it can be used for remote object manipulation. The experts can actually consult over uh, AV calls, audio visual calls uh, for construction sites or inspection of factories or they can solve problems. They can be there at many places on the same day or same hour because they don't have to travel. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those, those are all new jobs. So you can have something like a drone pilot. They're already there, but uh, that's going to be kind of uh, one set of new job that's going to come. Work from home is the new norm. Uh, COVID has changed many things. It has accelerated this whole technology wave by at least one to two years. So it's going to have a lot of impact uh, for jobs, for the cities, for quality of life, uh, for the commercial space, for residential buildings, and so on. And it's also going to support mm. many of the sustainable development goals. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the 2030, I guess, all the 17 goals needs to be realized. Uh, so that's a very uh, important mission. So, okay, that's good. So if I understand right, you are saying that uh, some of the existing jobs may go and there will be new jobs. Like you said, a drone pilot could be one important job. Uh, tomorrow, if you construct you using a 3D printing, even construction of villas happening today, there might be new jobs will be uh, created. So I think uh, the important point what you are trying to bring out here is uh, I think new jobs will be created for that maybe cities have to prepare for it with a new education, new skills and all. So uh, that's good. So now coming back. So most of the times we face uh, challenges uh, to get the services, especially from the government agencies and all. Few times you might, but there's a lot of improvement happened of course in the last one decade. Uh, leveraging technologies and uh, the government policies and all. But at the same time, after 5G, so what do you think? Whether citizens want to get any services from the state government or uh, any government of India, for example, so what sort of uh, improvements can happen with the 5G in terms of offering services to citizens and enhancing their quality of life? Yeah, all public services, uh, BAT governance, government services, public safety, utility services, uh, healthcare services, education, social services, various professional services, they all are going to get benefited from 5G and they will all be different. So there's going to be a lot of innovation. Uh, so out of these, uh, 
the construction, manufacturing, utilities are going to get a lot more benefit. They are going to derive maximum benefit. Healthcare, education, the government, public services, they are also, they are not left behind. They are also going to be, so you, as you mentioned, they are already being digitalized. For example, a pensioner, if they want to get a new certificate that I'm alive, uh, they don't have to physically visit, but they can do right. it over mobile phone or video. Uh, so yeah. they can help and then 5G is going to accelerate that with higher rates and speeds and greater penetration. Okay. So you can have improved location services, for example, for positioning or location of uh, vehicles or drones. You can have drone ambulances mm-hmm. and uh, you can yeah. have uh, crowd control systems, uh, which are going to be a lot less intrusive if you really look at it. Uh, and right. uh, disaster recovery. So I talked mm-hmm. about this network slicing and they can be set up uh, in a very short time. So you can have temporary networks. Uh, let's say there's, a, there's an event. Uh, let's say cricket or football or a sports event, uh, they can set up for uploading the high quality video or it can okay. be a disaster for, for disaster recovery. They can set up a network and tear it down later. So all these things are going to actually improve, uh, like you said, the quality of life. So I, I have a hypothetical question. So do you think after 5G, can I expect a, a robo government officer or a robo service representative, robo teacher? or a robo uh, doctor for preliminary things. So do you see such type of things will come because 5G is there and uh, possibly artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms require high computing power and network. So if all are available, do you see any change in the governance in the cities where robo advisors will come as service agents? Yes, so this is a kind of uh, dilemma or uh... Uh, how you actually uh, leverage the artificial intelligence, the decision making of uh, everyday life. So with greater penetration, lots of decisions uh, can be left in the hands of AI or uh, they can assist the human beings where you need to actually exercise certain degree of uh, personal judgment. So I think there is going to be increased access and availability through video, telehealth, uh, yeah. there's something called tactile internet. So the haptic feedback, you can train people over internet, uh, even for fine water skills. Uh, that's going to yeah. come up. Uh, so, by the way, so are, we, are, we still, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, are we still using motor skills now after all these touch gestures and uh, all these different way of interfacing with the devices? So do you see the role of five motor skills today? Oh, yeah. So it's about training a surgeon. Uh, so the training a surgeon or uh, training a pilot okay. or training uh, these fine motor skills. It could be swimming or art or whatever mm. or uh, okay. you know, some kind of uh, very uh, crucial mechanical interventions. So okay. they, are all, they all can be like uh, help with this. For example, the first robo surgery, the daily robot, remote robo surgery, uh, it's not robo, sorry. The, the uh, remote surgery was carried out as early as 2001. In 2003 onwards, they have established uh, the remote surgical unit uh, where different surgeons can operate remotely and they have this ATM asynchronous transfer mode, uh, 15 megabit link. Uh, But we can see why it's not widely uh, used is because of the lack of this low latency, a good link. So I'm not saying that uh, it's going to be by default possible, uh, this kind of remote surgeries, but uh, 5G is going to take all of us one step closer to such things. Okay. So my last question for you. Okay. We are talking about so many benefits. Okay. You talk about uh, the remote uh, surgery surgeries probably with proper telemedicine uh, guidance and is possible teleeducation, uh, what not, everything. And uh, citizen services, uh, drone-based ambulances, or drone-based uh, surveying. Uh, that means we are going to see uh, equal number of uh, digital workers in addition to the human workers. So, so so it's like human workers and digital workers could be a drone or an IoT device, whatever it is. They are also becoming intelligent. Yeah, the cobots. Cobots, uh, yes, absolutely. So that's where I was telling in one of the meetings, Indian population today is 200 crore. It's not 130 crore. 70 crore already there. Maybe some intelligent devices already implemented, right? So we started working with them. May not be at the scale of what we expect. So you'll have a mix of... Uh, human workers and digital workers in a city that might be next 20 years 
we might see it. But now, 5G, there are different theories. Okay, a lot of majority of the people decline that it is not going to impact anything, uh, your brain cells, or it is not going to impact uh, your uh, body or not. But some theory, again, it may not impact the brain, but it will impact, it will go through your skin to the human tissues. And there is a possibility of creating a damage. So 5G towers, as you rightly said, there are so many towers required. The density is higher. So, so much uh, of electromagnetic waves. People are worried. So are we ready? As a government perspective, did they test it? So please share these two thoughts. Health implications, government readiness in India. Yeah, this is an important aspect. So let me dwell a little detail into it. Uh, so uh, see, uh, the different aspects. One is towers, we touched upon it. Next one is spectrum uh, and handsets. So mm -hmm. towers are going to be multiplying, like uh, like we said, they're going to be 10 or 100 times more towers in 5G, but they're all going to be smaller. So because they are smaller, they're going to have lower power of radiation. So the towers are going to cover only a few hundred meters, so they're not going to be as powerful uh, radiation in and around them. That's one thing. Second thing is when it comes to spectrum, they're going to increasingly use uh, millimeter waves. So the millimeter waves are the higher range of uh, shorter wavelengths. They are higher frequency ranges, more than 24 gigahertz or uh, 32, 300 gigahertz kind of range. So in India, the spectrum in 24 gigahertz and 28 gigahertz, uh, they are already allotted. The reasons for this are one, we have a higher bandwidth, higher capacity, uh, you have higher carrier bandwidths and higher capacities. That's one. But coming back to the health topic, uh, these waves do not travel long distances. They, it's hard for them to go through the walls, uh, the concrete, the buildings, the foliage, the trees, uh, and all that. And they also cannot really travel deep into the tissue so the skin is going to get heated up uh, i'm going to develop a little more detail into it uh, but not the tissue so much so they did a lot of uh, research on this especially the research on uh, below 60 gigahertz frequency and its impact is really very well established and there is also quite a good amount of body of knowledge on this millimeter waves as well as of now so they, they studied uh, gene expression, effects on the nervous and immune systems, uh, cell proliferation, skin heating, effect on eyes, effect on brain, and so on. So they do not possess enough photonic energy. That's the most important thing to break chemical bonds or cause ionization. So this whole radiation is called non-ionizing radiation. Mm -hmm. So you would have okay. heard that. So yes. it's, it's going to be uh, is safer in that sense. That's one. Secondly, okay, finally, let's get to the handsets. So handsets, you would have heard of this term called specific absorption rate, SAR. I think mm -hmm. if you, if you uh, key in like, I think star hash, zero seven hash, something like that on your handset, most of the handsets will display uh, how much of radiation they are actually going to cause at its peak. So they show something like one, one and a half uh, watts per kg or whatever. So this is a rate that is arrived at uh, globe, globally. US has the limited this to 1.6 watts per kg, whereas Europe has at uh, two watts per kg of uh, body weight. And India switched to US standards. That's 1.6 watts per kg uh, in 2012. So the telecom engineering center tests all the handsets for that. So one is you can buy uh, a phone with lower SAR, but uh, that again is not enough because uh, that's the peak rate. Uh, and on average, it may a, a, a higher SAR rated phone or maybe radiating less. But mm -hmm. let's all be very clear uh, in order to minimize, let's not carry mobile phones when it's not necessary. Let's not sleep next to them uh, to the extent possible. Let's use hands-free earphones or speaker phones or other accessories. Okay. So they're not worn on body. So. Uh, okay. Coming to towers, 10% of the towers are checked by the regulator. I think it can go up. They can even crowdsource. So I think with all those things. Okay. Will so if you want to use uh, a uh, remote, uh, for example, you may use a Bluetooth or uh, speaker. Speaker might be the best thing probably. But if yes. you use, uh, again, uh, Bluetooth, there are waves, right? Uh, is there any impact because of that? Uh, of course, short distance and uh, other things. 
any yeah, they're all like uh, within the body body varying distance they're all variable so you have uh, much less power so the power okay. is extremely low but having okay. said that uh, see when i talked about this uh, sar this r and all those things that is derived uh, and if you look at the tables it's basically meant for a kind of uh, mean time of 6 minutes uh, that's a kind of thing so okay. we don't to, we need to limit the kind of exposure if you want to talk all day or hours and hours obviously mm. the impact is much but even then the uh, the these waves are not going to impact deeply okay. to the body so sure. it's not ionic in variation excellent so i think uh, you covered uh, very well uh, you talk about the difference between 3g 4g and uh, 5g which we are in uh, then how is 5g really create uh, new opportunities whether uh, business opportunities or how to improve the city administration what sort of new jobs will be uh, created so then of course the health perspective you gave very good uh, information so in summary uh, 5g will become a catalyst for Uh, great innovations in the city and uh, it improves the uh, economy it improves the social status maybe because of the new jobs it improves the social capital the relationships collaboration among uh, multiple people if really implemented uh, with a true uh, perspective so i hope uh, india uh, become one of the top developed nations as dr kalam said with this 5g we should not miss the bus Uh, thank you so much, uh, Banu. It's a wonderful thank you. discussion. Thank you for you, uh, VSR and IIT, and it's an excellent summary. Sure. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.